Welcome back to the Universe of God. This is part two of the series, Passover and Easter. And I apologize, I was cut short in the last video. I wasn't aware of my time. Um, and I was kind of cut short, so I do uh, apologize. But let's begin video two, where we left off talking about the 10th day. Um, and what we were discussing on the 10th day is how the Lamb of God was being selected as was traditional. Um, you know, it was a tradition of God. This was uh, the Lamb of God who was Jesus, and he was chosen by the people um, as the Lamb selected for Passover. And so, you know, in the last video I pointed out, they were crying Hosanna, um, and they were crying Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Um, also what we see is that, you know, all the while Jesus is really just fulfilling the scriptures with everything that he did. And this is why he always said that he, uh, speaks only what the father tells him and he does only what the father, uh, shows him or tells him. And he even says that if we knew the father, then we would have known him or would know him. You know, he was the word made flesh and all the fulfillment of scriptures is just more witnessing, witnessing a uh, testimony of this. So the 10th day, the lamb is selected. Jesus is selected in the new Testament, um, by the people. And then let's talk about some more proof regarding the 10th day. Now, where was Jesus before the Passover? So in John chapter 12, verse one through three, it says, then Jesus six days before the Passover came to Bethany where Lazarus, uh, which had been dead, uh, whom he raised from the dead there, they made him a supper, uh, and Martha served, but Lazarus was one of them that sat at the table with them. Then he took Mary a pound of ointment. Um, or then took Mary a pound of ointment of spikenard, very costly. And she anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the ointment. So the lamb, uh, I'm sorry, John 12 verse seven. Then said Jesus, let her alone against the day of my burying hath she kept this. We see that this is the ninth of Abib, um, or Aviv, which is also called Abib, right? Um, and it's being six days before Passover. So it's on the ninth of Abib and it's also six days before Passover. So that means the next day was the 10th of Aviv, which is uh, known as Palm Sunday. So this is all happening again in synchronicity. Okay. Now we're going to um, go into the lamb being one year old male and without defect. So this was another uh, biblical requirement in the Old Testament, and it's found in Exodus, um, Exodus 12 and five. It says the animals you choose must be year old males without defect, and you may take them from the sheep or the goats. Jesus was the firstborn son of God. Okay, Luke 23, four. Then Pilate announced to the chief priests and the crowd, I find no basis for a charge against this man. So this is, this is very important. Uh, Pontius Pilate declares to the Jews who are trying to crucify Jesus, Yeshua, and he is crying to the Jews uh, or declaring to the Jews that Jesus is innocent in his eyes, which is a declaration to the Jews that the lamb is without blemish. Okay. This is awesome because again no jot or tittle will be removed from the law not one thing was left out fulfillment of the old testament was made manifest in christ and the this is further evidence and again passover is just one portion of the evidence um there's so much so jesus uh or yeshua in hebrew he was God's firstborn and he was presented to the priests. He was presented uh, to Herod and to Pilate for inspection and determination of whether he was guilty. 
And what's so awesome is that the kings of the world found no fault with him. This is so significant because the only ones who actually found fault with Christ was the Jews, the lost sheep of Israel. And remember, he said he came to his own and his own recognized him not. So the world recognizes this man is innocent. This is a lamb without defect. This, this man, um, this firstborn son of God, uh, you know, is a lamb without defect. The world even noticed that, but it was his people who really, you know, should have known and didn't. So were they really his people? Um, now let's go on to the 14th day where the lamb is slain. Now Passover lamb is slain on Wednesday between 3 and 6 p.m. at the end of the day. This is tradition. Um, in Exodus 12 and 6, it says, Take care of them until the 14th day of the month when all the members of the community of Israel must slaughter them at twilight. Then uh, they are to take some of the blood and put it on the sides and tops of the door frames of the houses where they eat the lambs. The same night, they are to eat the meat roasted over the fire along with bitter herbs and bread made without yeast. Do not eat the raw meat or boiled in water, um, but roast it over a fire with the head, legs, and internal organs. Do not leave any of it until morning. If some is left until morning, you must burn it. This is how you are to eat it. With your cloak tucked in your belt, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, eat in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. On the same night, I will pass through Egypt and strike down every firstborn of the people and animals, and I will bring judgment on all the gods of Egypt, because I am the Lord. Okay, the blood will be a sign for you on the houses where you are, and when I see the blood, I will pass over you. No destructive plague will touch you when I strike Egypt. This is a day you are to commemorate for the generations to come. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord, a lasting ordinance. So let's see what's we're going to continue on um, going through the remainder of this exodus uh, because again Jesus is fulfilling the scriptures and that's really what we want to be cognizant of um, but for seven days they're you know they're going to eat bread made without yeast on the first day remove the yeast from your houses whoever's eating anything with yeast must be cut off from Israel um, on the first day hold a sacred assembly and another one on the seventh day don't work um, on all these days, except to prepare your food for everyone to eat. That's all you may do. It says, celebrate the festival of unleavened bread because it was on this very day that I brought your divisions out of Egypt. Again, celebrate it as a lasting ordinance for the generations to come. So, uh, the last supper took place on the 14th. Okay. The 14th of Aviv, which is called Nisan. Um, so we have different translations, right? We have uh, how the language has changed over time. And so some of these words are the same um, or they're pointing to the same time. Um, but anyhow, again, the last supper took place on the 14th of Aviv, which is Aviv, right? Um, and honoring the Passover yeast. And also at twilight, Jesus was taken into captivity to be slain as a Passover or sacrificial lamb and the king of the Jews. Jesus could not have Passover feast at the same time as was custom because he was the slain lamb. Therefore, he honored it with his disciples before his death. The last supper Jesus had, um, he was taken into captivity at twilight. Again, he fulfilled the scriptures to the letter, to the T, <laughs> to the jittle or jottle, <laughs> right? Um, so anyhow, the Lord will pass over the threshold and rebuke the devourer. Okay. This is something that should, you know, it gives us good news. In Exodus 12, uh, it says, when the Lord goes through the land to strike down the Egyptians, he will see the blood on the top and sides of the door frame and will pass over that doorway and will not permit the destroyer to enter your houses and strike you down. He says to obey these instructions as a lasting ordinance. 
Um, now, what we want to understand is only the blood of the lamb gives us the victory, okay? When we put the blood of the lamb on our doorpost, we notice that God is saying he will not allow the destroyer or death, right? Or the plagues um, to enter our houses and strike us down. With the blood of the lamb, we will have victory over death and we will experience victory over the enemy with this lamb's blood. These are all physical representations of spiritual matters and spiritual matters that many can identify with in our experiences in this life. So the blood of the lamb is where the victory is coming from. And that, you know, if you've grown up a Christian or if you are a Christian period, um, a follower or believer, believer, I'm sorry, of uh, Messiah ben Joseph or Meshiach uh, ben Joseph or Yeshua Christ. And I say these names because some of you will understand that you know, Messiah ben Joseph is just talking about Jesus. And in uh, 1 Kings where we read um, about them, you know, shouting out to Jehu, Jehu is the same um, as well. It means salvation, right? Salvation has come. So th- these are the same things. It's the same uh, representation here. So we're still, you know, we're talking about Jesus Christ, Yeshua, Messiah, Ben Joseph, the one who came to suffer the first time he comes, he comes to suffer and die to self known as Messiah, Ben Joseph, son of Joseph, right? Because his stepfather was Joseph, even though we know God was his, you know, biological father. Um, so one and the same, this, this special person that, uh, Passover is pointing to the the blood of the lamb that gives victory. Now let's go to the 15th day, beginning of a new day. Moses and the Israelites um, are eating the Passover celebration and Jesus was in the belly of the earth after being crucified. Um, and this is the beginning of the first day of unleavened bread. So we see this parallel or foreshadowing from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Now, Leviticus 23, 6 says, And on the 15th day of the same month is the Feast of Unleavened Bread unto the Lord. Seven days you must eat unleavened bread. The 15th day of Passover is not only the celebration of the eating of the Passover, but it is the first day of unleavened bread. What does unleavened bread represent? It represents no sin. So Jesus, Jesus was swallowed up in the belly of the earth. Okay. Like Jonah uh, was also swallowed up in the belly of a whale, Matthew 12, 20. Um, And this is where he was reclaiming the saints, you know, in the belly of the earth and the heart of the earth is what another translation calls it in the bowels of the earth is what another translation says. Um, But Jesus goes into the heart of the earth, the depths of the earth into Sheol. Okay. Um, To reclaim the saints because he had finally come and finally overcome sin as was prophesied uh, for thousands of years. And now death and the grave, um, He overcame sin, he overcame death and the grave, and now he could rightfully take back God's children from the captivity of the enemy. Now, this reflects, you know, that reflected the sign of Jonah as well. Um, When Jesus said, you know, I give you no other sign than the sign of Jonah, which is so packed with revelation, it's amazing. Um, And I have a series on that and, uh, an ebook that I still want to get published to share as well. Um, but, you know, Jesus made the comment um, and here we have him in the heart of the earth in the belly of the earth um, as well, just like Jonah for three days. Now we're going to come back in the next part in part three, and we're going to go further into the Passover.